Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another video on operating systems. So in this video, we will see about Peterson solution in operating systems. So already I have told you what is a critical section and what is critical section problem. So critical section is nothing but that portion of the program code in which the program tries to manipulate the value of the shared data. And critical section problem is to design a protocol which can actually be used by cooperating processes in such a way that when one process is uh, entering the critical section or manipulating the critical section, no other process should be allowed to execute in the critical section. Now two important things which has to be remembered in this Peterson solution is one is it's a software based solution and the other one is it is actually restricted to two processes that is it's a two process solution and uh, there will be two data structures which is actually um, shared by between these two processes one is turn variable and the other one is the value uh, and the other is a boolean array called as flag which is used to indicate which process is ready or interested to enter the critical section. Now the turn variable is used to indicate whose turn it is to enter the critical section. Turn is an integer variable which is used to indicate whose turn it is to enter the critical section. And the flag array is used to indicate whether a process is ready or interested to enter the critical section. Now this Peterson solution actually provides a software based solution to the critical section problem. Software based solution means that it provides you an algorithmic description of uh, solving the critical section problem and uh, by uh, understanding this algorithm we are also able to understand what are all the complexities involved in designing a solution to the critical section problem. I hope that you all remember that there are three requirements which has to be satisfied by any solution to the critical section problem. What are the three requirements? The three requirements are namely mutual exclusion, progress and bounded weight. So uh, consider any process PI in this critical section. The structure of process PI will look like this. So here the process will execute a flag variable. Uh, the if process PA wants to enter the uh, critical section, it will set its flag variable to true. And then it will set the value of the integer variable turn to j, which means that if process PJ wants to enter the critical section, it can actually do so. And then it will actually execute a while loop. So in that while loop, what it will do is it will check whether the value of the flag for the process j is true and whether the value of the turn variable is equal to j. So when will the value of the flag variable for process j be true? So when this both these conditions are true then the while loop becomes true and the process PA gets stuck up in an infinite loop that is it will not be able to enter the critical section. So when both these conditions are true it actually means that process PJ also wants to enter the critical section or it is already in the critical section. So when process PJ is already there in the critical section, process PI will never be allowed to enter the critical section because of this infinite while loop. When one of the conditions becomes false, when process PJ, let's say it has finished executing in the critical section, it will set flag of J to false. So in that case, one of the conditions becomes false and process PI will be able to enter the critical section. So after executing in the critical section, process PA sets its flag variable to false and then executes the remaining portion of the code. So just try to understand what happens uh, to process PA in Peterson solution. Whenever a process PA wants to enter the critical section, it will set its flag variable to true and it will set the value of the turn variable to J. And then it uh, runs a while loop which checks whether the flag variable of process pj is set to true and the turn variable is equal to the value of the turn variable is equal to j. So this will ensure that when uh, pa wants to enter the critical section no other process is already executing in the critical section. Now this is the general structure of process pa in Peterson solution. I hope you all will be able to understand this general structure. Now 
let's take two processes since this is a two process solution let's take two processes p0 and p1 and uh, just we will uh, check out how the code will look like in these two processes in process p0 uh, if it wants to enter the critical section it will set the flag variable for process p0 will be set to true and the turn variable will be set to 1 indicating that if process p1 wants to enter the critical section it can do so and then process p0 will check whether the flag variable of process p1 is true and whether the turn variable is set to 1 if both are true then it will loop infinitely in this while loop until one of the condition becomes false when one of the condition becomes false it will execute the critical section it will enter the critical section and execute the code in the critical section and then it will set its flag variable to false now uh, how the code will look like for the process p1 for the process p1 it will set its own flag variable to true and then it will set the value of the turn variable to zero and then it will execute the while loop where it will check whether the flag variable of pro since it is in process p1 it will check whether the flag variable of process p0 is set to true and whether the turn value turn variable value is also equal to zero when both are true it will run an infinite loop which keeps on checking and which keeps on running until one of the condition becomes false when one of the condition becomes false process p1 enters its critical section and then uh, it will execute the code in the critical section after finishing the execution of its code it will set its own flag variable to false which means that uh, if other process wants to enter the critical section it can actually do so so this is how the code will look like for the two processes p0 and p1 now for uh, us to ensure that this peterson solution is a workable good solution and it solves the critical section problem we have to prove that our peterson's algorithm satisfies these three requirements of the critical section what are the three requirements mutual exclusion progress and bounded weight okay let us check whether peterson solution for these two processes p0 and p1 satisfies these three requirements or not so first one is mutual exclusion what does mutual exclusion say mutual exclusion says that when p0 is uh, executing in the critical section p1 should not be allowed to enter the critical section let's say p0 is executing in the critical section let's say p0 uh, is executing this code and when p0 wants to enter the critical section uh, let's assume p1 is not interested in entering the critical section so p0 will set its flag variable to true and it will set the value of the turn variable to 1 and then it will check the value of the flag variable for process p1 and the value of the turn variable so the value of turn variable is already set to 1 here uh, flag of 1 will be false because p1 is not interested to enter the critical section now so since one of the condition turns out to be false the entire while loop becomes false and so process p0 enters into the critical section so let's say when process p0 enters into the critical section assume that p1 tries to enter the critical section uh, let's say whether p1 let's see whether p1 is able to enter the critical section or not so what p1 will do it will try to execute its part of the code so it will set its own flag variable to true then it will set the value of turn to zero it will check whether flag of zero is equal to true yes flag of zero if p0 is executing in the critical section it will set its flag to true and then only it will start executing in the critical section so flag of zero is equal to true is true flag of zero is equal to true and the value of turn is also equal to zero both are zero both are true inside the while loop so since both the conditions are true uh, the while entire while loop becomes true and so p1 continues to loop infinitely in this while loop so it will never be able to enter the critical section so from this you can understand that if p0 is executing in the critical section p1 is not allowed to enter the critical section it's not it is not possible for p1 to enter the critical section and so mutual exclusion condition is preserved in the peterson solution 
what is the second condition second condition which has to be met for the uh, solution peterson solution is progress progress means that only those processes which are interested in entering the critical section should participate in the decision of which process should enter the critical section next that is all the processes which are not interested should not participate in the decision of which process should enter the critical section next say for example how this is being ensured is uh, let's say you have uh, three processes p0 p1 and p2 uh, let's say p0 and p1 is interested in entering the critical section and p2 is not interested in entering the critical section so what we are actually doing here um, while checking the condition for entering into the critical section we are checking the consider this code so in this uh, while statement we are only checking the flag variable of those processes whose flag variable is set to true so when will the flag variable be set to true i told you the initial uh, uh, a default value of initialization of the flag variable is false that is initially in this peterson solution the flag variable of all those processes in the system will be set to false so when a process is interested to enter the critical section it will set its flag variable to true so we are checking the flag variable of only those processes which are interested to enter the critical section that means we are checking the flag variable of those processes which are set to true here so if flag variable is set to false the process is not interested to enter the critical section and we are not checking the flag variable of those processes so by this way we are ensuring that the progress condition is also met for this peterson solution we are taking into account only those processes which are uh, interested in entering into the critical section and all the uninterested processes are not involved in uh, this decision making process and so the uh, the requirement of progress is also met here so we are able to meet this condition also what is the third one third one is bounded weight bounded weight means that let's say you have two processes p0 and p1 and p1 requests for entry to the critical section but p0 is already executing in the critical section so what happens is p1 is made to wait let's say p p0 finishes its execution in the critical section and once again it requests for entry to the critical section to the operating system and let's say the operating system also gives access to p0 to enter the critical section now p1 is again made to wait let's say p0 completes its execution in the critical section for the second time and once again it requests access to the critical section and if the os again grants the request for p0 then p1 is actually made to starve this condition is called as starvation and uh, this should not happen that is the main requirement that requirement is called bounded weight now let's see if this condition is satisfied by our peterson's algorithm so here what happens is uh, whenever a process p0 let's say process p0 enters the critical section once it finishes its execution in the critical section it sets its flag variable to false which means that it is no longer interested in entering in the critical section this time gap may be utilized by process p1 so as soon as a process as soon as process p0 finishes its execution in the critical section it sets its flag variable to false and at that uh, time gap p1 will be allowed to enter the critical section similarly if p1 is already executing in the critical section after finishing its execution it is going to set its flag variable to false so in the, so that means after p1 finishes p0 will definitely get a chance to enter the critical section so no process will have a indefinite waiting time or indefinite starvation and so from this we can understand that our third requirement of critical uh, critical section solution which is bounded weight is also satisfied by the peterson's algorithm so that is all about peterson solution so now that we have uh, learnt about process synchronization critical section problem and also about the peterson solution uh, i have a gate problem here try to answer this gate question so if you have found out the answer to this gate question please comment below and uh, the solution um, to this gate question will be discussed in the in my next video 
so the question this is a gate 2010 question so the question says that consider the methods used by processes p1 and p2 for accessing the critical section so here two codes are being given so if this code is being used by two processes to enter their critical sections you have to check and say whether uh, mutual ex whether both mutual exclusion and progress conditions are satisfied or only mutual exclusion condition is satisfied or only progress condition is satisfied so this is a question which was asked in gate 2010 examination so please try to Uh, uh, try to practice this question and uh, find out whether you are check out whether you are able to answer this question or not so i will provide the solution to this question in my next video so that's all for today um, so till we meet in the next video spread positivity spread love take care bye bye